In this video, we're going to be looking at how to draw positive ions. If you're not already happy with how to work out the number of protons, electrons and neutrons that there are in an atom, and which shells to put the electrons into, then there are two other videos you should probably watch before you watch this one. We're going to start today with a lithium atom. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, we have the square from the periodic table. This gives me the symbol, the atomic number and the relative atomic mass. Occasionally, you will see these two numbers switched over, particularly if you're looking at an American website or maybe watching an American video. Handily, your AQA GCSE periodic table does tell you which one is which because there's a key. But even if you forget, you can always remember that the atomic number or proton number is the smaller of the two numbers. We're going to use this periodic table square, first of all, to figure out how many protons, electrons and neutrons this atom has. As you hopefully know, the number of protons is given by the atomic number. In AQA GCSE chemistry, this will always be at the bottom of the square. So as we can see, here it says that the atomic number of lithium is three, so we know that lithium has got three protons. In an atom, the number of electrons and the number of protons will always be exactly the same. So since we already know that lithium has three protons, we can also say that it must have three electrons. Now the mass number tells us how heavy the atom is. And as you know, the mass number is made up of the numbers of protons and the neutrons. The electrons aren't included, but that's not because they don't weigh anything, but just because they weigh so little that they barely affect the overall mass. So if we know that the number of protons and neutrons together is seven, and we've already figured out that there are three protons, we can do a little calculation and work out that the number of neutrons must be seven minus three, which is four, so we have four neutrons. Now, of those three numbers, there's only one that we're actually interested in. It's quite a good habit to get into writing out pen for every atom, but we're only actually interested in the number of electrons because they're the ones that are going to move around during chemical bonding and lead to the formation of an ion. For the other parts of the atom, we're just going to draw the nucleus and not worry about being any more specific about what's in it. So as you can see, the number of electrons in this atom is going to be three. And because we know that we always fill from the inside out, making sure that each shell is completely full before we move on, and because we know that there's room for two electrons in the first shell, followed by eight in the second and third shells, we can work out that the electron arrangement or electron configuration of this atom will be two, one. So here are my two electrons in the first shell, and here is one electron left over for the second shell. So this is the stage we got up to in the previous video, and we're now ready to start turning this atom into an ion. Now, when you're forming an ion, the rule is always that you're trying to get a full outer shell, or you might hear it described as the electron configuration of a noble gas, which just means a full outer shell. So when this atom makes an ion, that's going to happen by either gaining or losing electrons. Now, we're trying to do whatever is easiest, whatever the easiest way is to get a full outer shell. So the way I like to think about this is that it could either lose one electron or it could gain seven. Now, gaining seven sounds like a lot of hassle. It's going to take a lot more energy. So in this instance, this lithium atom is going to lose one electron. Now, that single electron isn't just disappearing. It has to be going somewhere. If we're talking about ionic bonding, that electron from the lithium is going to be given to a non-metal atom because ionic bonding is always between a metal and a non-metal. And that non-metal atom is going to form a negative ion, but we'll save that for another video. So those two elements are going to have a chemical reaction and this outer shell electron from lithium is going to be given away. So now if we look back at our electron arrangement, what we're going to see is that we don't have three electrons anymore. We just have two because we gave one away. Now, this is important because it's going to help us to figure out the charge on our lithium ion. So whereas before we had three positive protons and three negative electrons, we now still have three positive protons, but we only have two negative electrons. So these don't balance out anymore. We have an extra proton, so we have an extra positive charge. We can show this by drawing a little plus sign up here in the top right hand corner. And to make it extra clear that this is now an ion, a charged particle, we're also going to put square brackets around it. So 
this now shows us that we've got a lithium ion, it's got a single positive charge, and that's because it's lost one electron. So that's our first example, but we're now going to take two more. So potassium is going to react in a very, very similar way to lithium because they're in the same group. And as we know, all the elements in a group of the periodic table, or one of those columns, are going to react in similar ways and they're going to make ions with the same charge. So we're going to start off and again we're going to do pen. So as we know, the atomic number gives us the number of protons and the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons in an atom. We then do that little calculation, so 39 take away 19 to figure out the number of neutrons, which is 20. Of those numbers, we're only really interested in the electrons while drawing ions, so I'm just going to concentrate on that 19. And because I know that I fill from the inside out going 288, we can say that potassium has got two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and eight in the third shell, which leaves us with one for the fourth shell, so we have an arrangement of 2881. In exactly the same way as lithium, this potassium is going to find a non-metal element to bond with, and it's going to give away that single electron to the non-metal. If we now look back at our um, pen numbers, we can now see that we don't have 19 electrons anymore, we only have 18. So again, there is one more positive charge than negative charges, because there is one more proton than there are electrons. So we show this by putting square brackets around our ion and writing the positive charge in the top right hand corner. Now for our final example we're going to look at something that's not in group 1. So magnesium is in group 2 and if you quickly do pen you'll figure out that it has 12 protons, 12 electrons and therefore 12 neutrons. And so that's going to consist of 2 electrons in the first shell, 8 in the second shell and 2 left over. And it's not important at this stage whether you're going to draw those electrons near to each other um, or on opposite sides. It's really just a matter of personal preference for GCSE. So, because the magnesium is trying to get a full outer shell, it's not just going to lose one electron, it's actually going to lose both of these. And that could be to a single atom, say if this magnesium was going to react with some oxygen, or it could be to two separate atoms um, if the magnesium was going to react with some chlorine. So those electrons are going to be lost, and what we've now got is a situation where we don't have 12 electrons in the atom anymore, we only have 10. So if we balance out our positive charges from the protons with our negative charges from the electrons, we now have two extra positive charges. So once again, we're going to put square brackets around this to show that it's an ion, and we're going to write the charge, which is 2+. Plus. And that's how you draw positive metal ions.